Oh, this is just a side tangential conversation, like home improvement. I don't know. This is, I don't know. People that are not familiar with level one may watch this video. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm super long winded and boring and weird. I discovered something really cool and I just wanted to share. If you're doing renovation on an old house and you want to, you know, make it a little bit more whiz bang, a little bit more modern, um, rewiring for modern wiring standards. It's usually a key part of that, but there are some scenarios where keeping the old wiring kind of makes sense, but not in the way that you think. I can maybe save you some headache, maybe save you some money, and still have a perfectly up to code, fully compliant house that you can use some of your old, you know, potentially dangerous fixtures with. I'll show you how. All right, so first disclaimer, uh, I'm not an electrician. I'm just LARPing as one for this video, but this is really cool stuff. You wouldn't think, you know, light switches, like what is there to talk about technology wise for light switches? Well, I was watching Quinn on Twitter, um, Snazzy Labs, that guy. I help him with stuff sometimes. And uh, he has a really cool old house and it has a lot of the same kind of fixtures that my house had. And so this is something that I ran into and just something I thought I would share because I completely rewired my house with, with modern wiring. Um, there was some, I mean, it, well, actually, someone had started that project. I just finished it. And that got me thinking, like, let's talk about light switch technology. Okay, so check these out. This is completely crazy. Like, this is a push button. And this is actually a gang of two three-way light switches. So this was in the st stairwell, basically. Like this switch would turn on the lights downstairs and this switch would turn on the light upstairs. And there was another bank of switches upstairs, similarly, that would turn the lights on upstairs and switch downstairs. The wiring for this hasn't changed. So like in a modern house, well, it mostly hasn't changed. In a modern house, the wiring for this is basically exactly the same as it always was. The modern electric code, the thing that really changed from like the 80s until just a couple of years ago, is that now most, uh, in most scenarios and in most jurisdictions, um, you're required to have a neutral available in the box. And the reason for that are these smart switches. So I've got an Eaton Z-Wave, this is a, a Z-Wave Plus uh, electrical light switch. I've also got a motion sensor light switch. And we'll unpack the motion sensor light switch because it's it's basically the same as the, as the Z-Wave switch. But this is a switch where if it sees motion, uh, it'll turn on. And there's also a push button so you can turn it on. And if we look at the wiring, It's pretty much the wiring that you would expect for the wires are built in, but it's pretty much the wires that you would expect. So we've got a hot wire, and then this is out to the fixture, and then we have a ground wire, and then we have a traveler wire in case this is this, this switch is part of a three-way circuit. And that's where things get interesting. Now the Eaton switch is a little different in that there's also a white neutral wire because this thing takes a lot of power to run and they can't get away with just uh, parasitically getting the power on a circuit. So this is a little different. This doesn't require a neutral in the box. This one does. So depending on how your house is wired, you know, that may be a thing. For your actual light fixtures, like places where lights are, you will need to run a new wire. I'm sorry, that's just that's just the, the long and short of it. But with these kind of switches, you can actually switch these from 110 volt switching to low voltage switching. And the reason you can do that is because of these these switches. See, this blue wire will tolerate anything. You can you can give it 110 volts. You can give it one volt. You can also just have it float and not actually have any connection to anything. You can also connect it to ground. So using this as a traveler wire, tying it in with old existing circuitry that has been completely removed from your house's power grid, otherwise is one way that you can keep using old light switches like this. And this is, you know, it's a little anachronistic, but This was sort of like, there was a design that came before this was, there was like a little spinny switch and people were racing to patent these. And it's, it's kind of genius because you see this rocker that moves back and forth, it snaps, it moves really quickly. And in a lot of ways, a modern light switch, which that design hasn't changed in forever, you know, you flip up, you flip down, it's designed to move really quickly. If you move really slowly, a tiny little bit of metal will contact another tiny little bit of metal completing the circuit, but the two, you know, very comparatively small amounts of metal 
won't be able to support the amount of electricity traveling through that contact. It erodes, basically. It will wear the contact down. Whereas, because this moves physically very quickly, suddenly there's a lot of metal in contact with the contactor and it will support a lot more current through the switch. These switches, they're not UL listed, they're not up to code. If you, if you dive into it, you have to replace them. They are made in USA. There's not even really plastic here. The buttons are this kind of Bakelite stuff, which is sort of a pre-plastic. There's a paper insulator on the top here, and then otherwise it's ceramic. These are from about the 1920s, give or take. The wiring here, it is copper, but this, this wiring probably wouldn't even be rated for five amps uh, in a modern scenario. And uh, it's not really a large diameter. It's a little smaller than 14 gauge even, which is uh, sad and disappointing. So in terms of, yeah, let's run 100 watts through this wiring, not a good idea. So in a three-way circuit like this, if you have the opportunity to add a motion sensor or add a Z-Wave switch in the basement or somewhere out of the way, you can preserve your existing switches and their look and feel and still have a modern switch. And the three-way function will work correctly. So wiring these, these in, you know, like you can have two old switches in a three-way configuration tied into this blue wire and the actual traveler wire would just be float or connect to neutral so you don't have a hot wire that this is connected to at all so hopefully that would make your local codes people and your electrician happy basically this is just going back and forth between ground it doesn't supply any electricity this is just a sense wire this blue wire on both this and the uh, the the eaton z-wave connection so as you open and close the circuit which is just changing from float to ground, that's all you change on this traveler wire. And this is a really awesome way that you can maybe not have to rewire your entire house because these switches are basically not considered part of your electrical grid once you're not running any, you know, once they're not hot, once they're not connected to the hot side of, of uh, uh, either hot side of your electrical panel. Now, the, the codes and the rules and stuff where you are may vary a little bit. Definitely check with an electrician, run over this, check with your local codes people. There may be other rules that prevent you from doing that. And like I say, I ultimately opted to replace literally everything. But if you can add, you know, when you're doing your new wiring, if you tie your new wiring into your old wiring with a low voltage, basically no voltage, uh, traveler wire like this, you can still get away with using your old switches um, through that traveler wire. Otherwise, you can get modern reproductions of these. I did order a, a, a few modern reproduction light switches, but being able to do that with you know the modern thing is really good. And plus, these Z-Wave switches, they work with Home Assistant and all other sort of home automation stuff that you're doing. So like turning lights on and off based on people doing stuff with the alarm system, you can do that. And these are wireless, so you don't have to run extra wires or anything like that. It's Z-Wave. And it's Z-Wave Plus, so you get the security option with the Z-Wave. So it's an option. It's definitely, it's definitely an option. And I've, and I've certainly had my, my own fair share of renovation adventures working on this kind of stuff and keeping the old, you know, keeping the old fixtures working, keeping the iron fireman working. But I just thought I would share. The other, the other reason I wanted to make this video is because a lot of people with these Z-Wave switches will post on the forum and say, uh, "Hey, well, not our forum, not yet anyway." Uh, they'll say, "Hey, I'm doing a, a three-way switch replacement." You know what do i need to do and eden actually sells an accessory switch which is one of these z-wave switches that just takes power but doesn't actually provide any outputs and it's meant to slave off of uh, one of these other switches and it's a peer-to-peer -peer kind of a thing so you don't have to have a z-wave controller necessarily necessarily for it and it works really well but if you're introducing one of these switches into a scenario where it's a three-way or a four-way configuration you don't need the accessory switch you can use the blue wire with your old switches and it'll work fine. I mean, heck, you could even wire the blue wire up to modern light switches uh, in a three-way, just a standard traditional, you know, traveler wire three-way configuration. And this will continue to work perfectly normally. So like when this, the, this control switch is off and the state of the blue wire changes, it will turn on. It doesn't matter if it goes to high, it doesn't matter if it goes to low, it's just a state change. If this is on and the state of the blue wire changes, it will go off. So it works It works both ways. It's pretty genius, it's, it's pretty clever. So I just thought I would share that because you don't necessarily need the accessory switches with these depending on what it is that you're doing. So Mundle, this is level one. Quick 
you know, pro tip home rewiring switch. I thought it was fascinating. I'm signing out and I'll see you later. Thank you.